years ago when I attended art school, there were predominantly two types of musician, those who could read music and those who couldn't. There was also a third group, more exclusive, players who could both read and improvise. And of this crew, there was a select few who could do both convincingly. Our next Global Music Match featured performer is one of those. She comes to us from the Malvern Hills in the UK and is a player you've probably heard already on any number of Hollywood soundtracks. She's been on so many recording sessions that she lists them alphabetically on her website. And that list includes names like Paul McCartney, Bette Midler, Stevie Wonder. She's equally at home in the studio with the White Stripes and the Royal Philharmonic and has climbed on stage with The Who at Wembley Stadium and also with The Lion King in London's West End. Eliza Marshall was drawn to the flute from a very early age, but it was seeing the legendary Irish Illan Piper Davy Spillane at the age of nine that truly set her on her path. Her next stop was the Royal Academy in London, where she studied Western classical flute and discovered an astounding ability to sight read pretty much anything. She was so good as a young student that when a flautist dropped out of a symphony gig suddenly, Eliza was first called to take their place and could sight read her way through the score flawlessly and with feeling. And that was the skill that brought her into the world of movie soundtracks 10 years later, where, as she says, you don't see the music before walking through the door. It's all sight reading. And in recording studios, time is money. These studios are legendary places like George Martin's Air Studio or Abbey Road, where the Beatles created all that music history. And to work regularly in these places requires a degree of skill and confidence that most artists don't possess. And if they do, they would consider it a lifetime's work and certainly a very enviable career. But Eliza Marshall's path has taken her to so many other places, including touring throughout Europe, North and South America with Peter Gabriel's New Blood Orchestra and forming her own band, Ranagrai. There's a lot to tell you. So without further ado, Eliza Marshall. My passion and the love in my life was always world music and and actually music from all different genres. And I, mm -hmm. I mean, I loved Paul Simon. Mm -hmm. I loved rock bands. I loved strange kind of folk bands who collaborated with African tribes. And mm -hmm. It's interesting because I think it's just different types of focus. I always d describe like getting into a film session, for example, you arrive at a great studio, the music is plunked down. Often if it's a big film, it'll be a six day run. And and you literally, you do, you just see it and you switch into, I, I like to, my analogy is it's like aiming for the bullseye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know that concentration, you're looking, you're focused and you're gonna hit it. And I suppose being on a stage at a festival playing music that you've written, it goes into a whole different mindset in that for a start, you're a performer. Mm -hmm. You are on stage. You're not in the studio where you're making sure it's 100% precise, but you're not thinking about your audience. Being on stage, 
and actually giving your music to the audience right there and then for me is probably one of the most rewarding things you can do mm -hmm. um i was describing to somebody a few of the tours that i did that inspired my band Ranaguay were with peter gabriel yeah. and we toured all around north and south america we played at all the wonderful big venues and there was i think the the biggest um audience we played to was just over twenty thousand people so looking out at that kind of audience is so wonderful and it just made me think even if i'd never played to that kind of audience in my own capacity as my own band mm -hmm. i want to that that's an ambition that's worth striving for mm -hmm. um, and even now if you play in a festival to five thousand people or in a folk club to 300 people yeah. or 50 people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find that actually is okay. That's okay yeah. because it's still your music, and yeah. as you say, it's what you're yeah. you produced. So 